Hey guys, welcome in. What we do on this channel is we make strange decks that are fun and uh, informative. And what we do is we also purposely show games that we lose as well as ones that we win to keep it a little fresh and to let you see some of the trappings of the decks. Thanks a lot for watching, enjoy. Ninja, Ninja, Ramp. Yes, it's a green-blue ninja deck about ramping. I wanted to do something a little weird with, uh, with green-blue. Now, it's known for ramping, so we've got like this Troyan Gutsy Explorer. Add one green, one blue. Spend this mana only to cast spells with mana value 5 or greater, or spells with X in their mana cost. Or you can pay one blue and tap them to draw a card, then discard a card. So you think that obviously you're only playing this on big spells, but no. Because we have the Goose Mother in here too. That's an X spell, so you can just play this on turn four and, uh, you know, have this on turn three. Play this on turn four, and if you dropped a land, he's going to come out with four 1-1 one, one counters and be a 6-6 six, six flyer. We've got... This Tempest Heart here, this also, whenever you cast a spell with mana value 5 or greater, put two 1-1 one, one counters on him. And he's got a instant adventure attached to him that says draw two cards, then discard two cards. That actually ends up being really important in this deck. Uh, it's a lot better than it sounds. Now, for our big, big monsters, Gruff Triplets, this card is just busted it is stupid good three three trample for six mana it's expensive but when it enters the battlefield if it isn't a token create two tokens that are copies of it and whenever gruff triplets dies put a number of one one counters equal to its power on each creature you control named gruff triplets here's where the fun ninja part comes in you play out these gruff triplets if they for some reason do not block the card version of this not not the two tokens but the card version you can just ninjutsu in a small guy like this and then replay out the gruff triplets and get two more three three tokens uh we've also got the hornlock whale this guy's just a big beater. 6-6 six, six flash for 2 mana. Enters tapped if you do it on your opponent's turn, but who cares. It's the Lagoon Breach uh, adventure part of this card we're looking for. The owner of target attacking creature you don't control puts it on the top or bottom of their library. So it's just nice little disruption early on. And you can just cast out a big 6-6 six, six with Ward 2 later in the game. Playing any of these makes this guy bigger, so it's worth it. We've also got Virtue of Knowledge. This is mostly considered the worst virtue, but if you play it right, you can get some good value out of this. So its enchantment version is if a permanent entering the battlefield causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, it triggers an additional time. Well... This guy will get the extra 1-1 one, one counters. This guy will make four of the Gruff Triplets each time. This right here, Red Tooth uh, Gynecologist, I guess, or Genealogist, when he enters a battlefield, creates a royal token attached to another target creature. You can double that up so you get more royal tokens on more creatures. The Goose Mother... When you cast her, it gives you half X food tokens rounded up. But with this out, it just gives you the full amount. Um, this ability right here. This guy can be ninjutsued in with a death touch counter on him. And when he deals combat damage, you can remove a death touch counter. And if you do, you can exile an artifact or, a ch or enchantment that player controls. You can double that up with this uh vantress visions the instant 
version, you can copy it and destroy multiple enchantments off of it. That's really powerful. That's the real reason to play this card. The enchantment, the second part of the enchantment, is really win more. But if you have this out and you play a Gruff Triplets, they're just going to scoop. Got a Prosperous Thief. This guy, or this Gale, ninjutsu's in and gets you a treasure token. That's part of our ramp along with this. This does a little bit of destroying of enchantments or artifacts. This draws some cards. This taps down some of their creatures. This can make copies, uh, additional tokens of other attacking creatures when I ninjutsu it in. And the little fun card, Elusive Otter. This card is way better than it looks. It's a 1-1 prowess for one mana. It says creatures with power less than Elusive Otter's power can't block it. And it has a sorcery side that says distribute X 1-1 counters among any number of target creatures you control. Why this is so good is... Just like the Thousand Face Shadow being a 1-1 flyer for one mana, it's got really good evasion. So you can attack with these early on and get, get in some of these ninjutsu triggers early. Um, and when you ninjutsu this creature back to your hand, you can then use the sorcery side, distribute X-1-1 counters on the ninjas you just put out, and then recast them out anyways and do it again. So uh, that's what we're doing here. I will point out we have this Argoth Sanctum of Nature. Uh, it's just the land that will create 2-2 two, two bears, and it does mill you a little bit. But we don't really care about the mill. It's just that it can make us a 2-2 two, two bear if we really need it as just a target for using ninjutsu on. So that's what we're going to do. It's just a fun little beat em down weird ramp simic deck we call it ninja ninja ramp go 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 ninja go ninja go let's do this okay No blocks. Not worried yet. Make this card completely useless now. Fancy. Well, if this guy survives till my next turn, we're going to have Gruff Triplets, so let's see. Let's see what happens. Oh no, we might not. I take it back. Because that's a tap land. I need it untapped. That works. We've got the triplets. If he kills any of them, they make the other ones bigger. However, it might not work with Etching of Kamano because that exiles creatures. I don't know if he knows that. Interesting.
We're letting the five through. Beautiful. I'm attacking with everything. Because I've got this to return the creature to the top of his library, if he does have a haste creature. Oh, alright, well, he just had it. Nothing you can do against Mono Red when they just have it. I'll play it for, I don't know, somewhere around an hour. Yeah, no. Yes. We'll put you back. Hello, I say. It's a great card to bitter chill. Makes the card completely useless. He actually wants it dead now more than not dead. Yeah, we'll go no attack for the moment. Three. Okay. That's fine. We'll just make a 6-6 six, six flyer. <laughs> okay. Kind of shocked he didn't block that, but... <clears throat> Boy, all rares and mythics. Do you have anything else? Come on, stop giving me lands. God damn it. Yep. I have considered more ninjas. Sacrifice the food and gain a life.
Yeah. Yeah, there's just no way out of this. <clears throat> now, I could put other stuff in this deck, like protection spells and stuff, but then I literally just have to turn it into a protect myself from the meta deck instead of making something cool. So let's just make something cool. Oh, I'll get to show you. I'll get to show you something cool. Maybe. Because we're playing against red. He's gonna get Hornlock Whaled. Put it on the top or the bottom of your library. So we're going to start off doing something neat. So this rounds, it gives you half uh, X food tokens rounded up. So if you just pay one, it will round up and give you one. So for mana efficiency purposes, you cast this for three mana total as a 3-3 three, three, and you get the most value out of it. So no matter what he does, we'll get to keep the food token. Okay, he just wasted that. Sure. He comes in with a 1-1 counter. It doesn't give it to him afterwards. So this guy just wasted his spell. Now for the fun. We could put this in first because it only comes in untapped if the Goose Mother, or if I have a Legendary. So here's what I do. You attack. Draw a card off of this. Ninjutsu this in. For one mana. Put it back in my hand. Draw a card. Do two damage. Play the Goose Mother back out for X plus one. Auto pay. So now we drew two cards, got another creature out, and replaced our food. That's how you and untaps the goose mother. That's how you break this card. Yeah, see, he knows he has to get rid of it. He wanted to play that on my face, but he couldn't. We'll ninjutsu this in. Resolve. Let it hit. Get our treasure. Put this guy out. He'll put a royal token on this. Make it bigger. Now we got a block or two. Now what we can do is attack in with this red tooth ninjutsu back in this guy so we can get more royal tokens out of him. Or I could just play the Hornlock Whale on my next turn and have a giant 6-6 six, six, and that's something red cannot deal with. So that's what we're going to do instead. Oh, I'm reading what you're saying, Salamut. Yeah, you're right. You know, when you're playing against people that have nothing but like the best stuff, Okay. <laughs> Do Chana Creature doesn't untap. Alright, but it doesn't stop him from using his abilities. Okay. That's all we needed to know. So screw it. Let's just put out the whale. That has first strike, so we're not attacking.
This Eurobrass can give him more mana and flip, but he needs three instants or sorceries. He's only got two cards, so he can't activate it this turn. Check this out. We're going to tap another one of his creatures. Will it let me? It should. Oh, it's only enchanted creature. All right, whatever. We can still play it later. Now, we attack with everything. <laughs> I'll even play it out as a 2-2 for just two mana and get no... Uh, food tokens just so I can ninjutsu on turn three sometimes that's just the best play you have but yeah and the elusive otter lets me do the same thing if I get him instead of the goose mother or a similar thing it lets me put one one counters on other creatures Yeah, see, this is exactly what I'm talking about. I'll play the Goose Mother on turn two, and then Moon Circuit Hacker Ninjutsu him. Pay zero. Make him use removal, or else I will Ninjutsu him in. Okay. Take action, draw the card. Put the bitter chill on that. And say thanks. Yeah, see, he was a little shocked by the move, but it's a weird move. You wouldn't expect someone to use the Goose Mother early like that. But now he knows what I'm doing. We're just going to play this out. Just flat out. Yeah, we'll take the action. We'll drop the second bitter chill. Show you how this otter shit works. Met Doom today is taller than the rumors suggest. No, he's not. You're shorter than you remember. That's what's happening, Salamu. All right, so he's fixing his mana. All right. I wasn't going to play this out yet. Well, I didn't have it yet. But he's so good that... I'll just use the Elusive Otter as the creature. I was going to put 1-1 one, one counters on the these two creatures here, but no need to now. If, if this gutsy explorer guy that I just put out survives, we're going to get Gruff Triplets two turns in a row. If not, if he does kill it, then we'll just get the Goose Mother. So this elusive otter says he can't be blocked by creatures with power less than his and has prowess. So if I do draw a spell, I can just cast it, make him unblockable, and then go in. But I don't have any ninjas in hand at the moment to ninjutsu in, so I don't need to. What's he doing? 
He's doing the same thing I was doing with the exile stuff. He's just doing it in three colors. All right, he found he found his Pia. So the nice thing about that is, with him finding his Pia, he is not going to use a board wipe. So now is a perfect time for these gruff triplets. Also puts 1-1 one, one counter on the Tempest Heart, because it costs 5 or more. I don't think he's blocking this. So the reason I didn't do three color Pia like they're doing is that it's just slower than just doing red white. It's cooler. I like what they're doing. It's just slower. This deck I'm playing right now is a slow deck and look at my board. He let me like overrun him with stuff to where he has to wipe the board now, but he doesn't want to. Okay. <clears throat> Alright, he's going off a little bit right here. But, we have another one of these. And now they'll all be six sixes. We got five six six tramplers and a goose mother waiting in hand that will be a one, two, three, four, five, five. All right, a seven seven flyer, unless he, well, he can get rid of it right here. But it only costs two more to cast which just gets negated by this Troyan guy. Okay. I like what he's doing. He's he's putting everything he's got out there with this now. I don't know why they left the elusive otter, but they did. Say goodbye to your enchantment. Well, and your life, I guess. <laughs> we got him! Boom, 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 boom. Well, the gruff triplets got him. That card's just busted. Right, they should. Oh, hard to keep a... Two land hand with no green and a triple green card. But we have three different cards we can play. And he's about to think that I'm black-blue. Which I am not. Mm -hmm. 
Discard a card. Yeah, we'll do that. Uh, he's going to be one of these douches that just keeps spamming stuff during your turn. I'll do it on his, too, until he mutes me. Are you done? Nothing but removal deck. And not drawing a land is bad. Let's play him out. So he's playing Shieldred, so there's going to be four Shieldreds, and there's going to be four Beseech the Mirrors, which will let him get the Shieldreds. So it's basically eight Shieldreds. Once again, they still haven't... Wizard still hasn't dealt with the balance issues with Black. And that it's... Even with their newest set, the two most expensive and best cards are both Black. Like, they, they just don't get it. They don't understand how to balance this game. Uh, so you're gonna get games like this where, like, all this shit's just busted. And he can just sit here and do nothing, and it will just win for him. As long as I don't draw lands, I can't do anything, so I'm just going to concede and go to the next game. And they don't want to ban everything in black, but they kind of need to. They made the one color dramatically stronger than the other four for no reason. Yeah. Are we going to do one of these one of these again where it's I want to just rope you until you quit because I can't win by playing the game. This is probably a you know child that I'm playing against given that name I'm guessing anyways let's put a ninja out there for him oh okay just made that a lot easier for me Now we'll save it. <laughs> oh, sure. No. no. We don't want to do that now. We'll do this. Draw two cards and then discard two cards. One of those and that. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Get ourselves a 3-4 that will grow bigger and we can play our triplets on the next turn, but we're not going to. We're going to play this Virtue of Knowledge so that we get four Gruff triplets. I think that sounds like more fun. And it keeps us protected from an attack because we'll be able to use that too. You're not blocking this. Wow. Okay. going to play this out. If he attacks in, he will basically allow me to grow my Gruff Triplets enough to kill him in one shot on my next turn. What do you do? What do you do? And that. Do you have enough removal spells for all of the Gruff Triplets? He was not expecting me to block, was he? I'm going to have to sacrifice six permanents. Yeah, he's just roping out now because he realizes that I've won. So, uh, that'll about do it. When he uh, decides to finally come back, I think that's going to be it for the night. We'll win this game. And, uh, yeah. We'll have two 12-12 tramples. See, if he kills one with an instant spell, it will make the other one 12-12 bigger, so there's nothing he can do. He literally just dies. All right. All right, guys, that's going to do it. Thanks for watching. Um... Hit that like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. Also, come check me out at uh, twitch.com backslash I'm out. Have a good one.